Hi, my name is Chris from Glad Science, and I'm glad to see you. Today, we're going to be talking about labs. I love them very much. They're very cute and very fluffy. But we're also going to be talking about laboratories. Laboratories are one of the most integral parts of any chemistry course. Whether you're taking AP chemistry or intro to chemistry, it's very crucial to have an understanding of lab techniques. Safety always takes precedence in the lab because you can't really conduct a lab if you're on fire or your face is melted off because of acid. So there are a few cardinal rules when it comes to safety. So as a child, your parents always told you never to put objects in your mouth. Same goes for chemistry. You never want to put any chemicals in your mouth, whether they're safe or not. When you're diluting acid, you always want to make sure to pour acid into water rather than water into acid. When you're conducting a lab, you want to make sure you do it in a properly ventilated area. And you always want to make sure to heat objects slowly to prevent explosions. In order to minimize errors, there are several steps you need to take. First, you want to make sure your data is both accurate and precise. When doing titration labs, you want to make sure you rinse the urine with solution and not water. Make sure you never, ever, ever weigh a hot object. Wait until the object cools down to room temperature and then weigh it. When collecting gas over water, you want to make sure to account for both vapor pressure and vapor volume. Make sure you never contaminate your chemicals and stir your solution slowly. The last, most important, the most important part to minimizing errors is to keep significant figures in mind. Speaking of significant figures, significant figures can be the difference between the right answer and the wrong answer on both AP and your SAT. So when it comes to sig figs, you want to remember that all non-zero numbers are significant. So that's your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and not zero. Trailing zeros are not significant unless followed by a decimal. So the number 100 without a decimal only has one significant number, which is one. But the number 100 with a decimal has three significant numbers, the one, zero, zero. Every number besides the leading zeros after a decimal is significant. So let's take the number 1.0002 so the three leading zeros are not significant, while the two, five, and zero are significant, including the one that is significant too. And remember that answers can only be as precise as your least precise piece of data. So the two most common types of separation techniques are filtration and distillation. Filtration involves a solid and a liquid passing through a filter, while distillation involves the difference of boiling points. In distillation, the more volatile substance is vaporized, cooled, and collected. So when it comes to titration, there is one very important equation you need to know. M1, V1 equals M2, V2. And this is applicable for monoprotic acids. This basically says that the molarity times the volume of one titrant is equal to the molarity and volume of a second titrant. Molarity is calculated by the division of the moles of substance divided by volume. Let's say you have five moles of a substance in one liter of water. So you would have five molars of that solution. The equivalence point is the point where the moles of acid is equal to the moles of base. And without using this equation, you can discover the equivalence point using a color indicator. So the final and my favorite part of the laboratory is the equipment. There are several pieces of equipment in the laboratory that include, but are not limited to, the beaker, the burette, the burner, the crucible tongs, the dropper, the Erlenmeyer flask, the Florence flask, the forceps, the funnel, the graduated cylinder, the pipette, the spatula, the mortar and pestle, the scale, the ring clamp, the goggles, test tubes, and most important, not most important, thermometer. 
So thank you for checking us out, and I'm always glad to be of help.